Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We're built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. One of the most important new side-by-side -side models this season is the Wildcat Double X. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to arrange to get our hands on one for a really solid chunk of time to put it through its paces as much as we would like. So we've been talking with Textron, trying to figure out a way for us to, to test one adequately enough to gain some good uh, opinions of it. And the idea we came up with was to take it to Moab, Utah, and to meet up with one of their factory racers and have him take us on an adventure in Moab that's gonna really put the Wildcat through its paces. You know, I've been to Moab uh, a handful of times and it's one of those places that I say everyone should have on their bucket list. It's an incredible spot. I've ridden a bunch of the standard trails, the usual ones that are that are like well marked and mapped right out of the town of Moab. Um, but for this trip, we, I guess Ray told us we were gonna be going somewhere just a little bit different. Ray Bullock is a Textron off-road factory sponsored racer who races the XX in all types of different desert style racing. And um, we basically, we didn't meet Ray when we first met Ray. We, we met him along the side of the road on the highway and then we followed him to get to the riding destination or the, the place we were gonna unload and ride from. When I first met Ray, I didn't really know what to expect. I'd only spoke to him on the phone, but as soon as we shook hands and started talking, I realized that this guy was just like me. I mean, he's an avid motorhead. He loves riding side-by-sides. He loves going fast and hitting jumps. Uh, he just seemed like a really cool down-to-earth guy. And he was excited to ride as, as I was excited to ride. So we didn't waste any time in getting uh, his race XX off the trailer and then the basically brand new Wildcat XX stock version um, that I was going to be riding. You know, I got a call from uh, Textron, basically my boss, Ben, and he asked if I'd be interested in uh, doing a, a photo shoot of sorts in Moab. And before he even really said who it was or what was going on, I said, well, yeah, I'm always interested in riding in Moab. And then he said it was dirt tracks. I, I got excited immediately. I couldn't wait to uh, get Luke out here and, and go show you guys some of the areas that uh, we actually take these machines and go test it. Our first stop on this trip was sort of in a valley down to a wash area where there was a map and it basically showed all the trails of the area that we were riding. These were trails that really only the locals knew about. So he showed us the map, showed us sort of how vast the trails were and diverse the trails were and kind of gave us an idea of where we would be headed. And from that point, it was just a matter of riding. We're in an area near 10 Mile Wash. This is some of the areas that are close to my heart that I feel like what, are what makes this area appeasing and desirable. And to me, it's a lot cooler to go off that beaten path and get the stuff that no one else takes the time to go see. The goal for this trip and, and the destination that Ray had picked out for us was what he described as a spectacular overlook of the Green River. And the Green River is a river that is pretty big. It's, it's really old and, and it's a cool river and it flows right into the Colorado River, not far from where we were gonna see it. Ray promised an incredible view. He promised us an incredible ride getting to that view. So uh, I was pretty excited to see where we were gonna go. The first place he took us to, or the first sort of section of riding that you have to do when you leave where we parked is run these really cool river washes and high speed, what I would describe as high speed trails. I mean, they're really not trails, but they are trails and high speed doesn't even come close to describing it. I mean, Ray's a desert racer and this is sort of like the desert. He was pushing it as hard as he could. You know, it was just a really cool way to, to start off this sort of in-depth test of the XX, was to just push it full throttle and get used to how it handles and how it handles big bumps and, you know, whoops and things like that. It was a really fun morning, that's for sure. The high-speed trail section led directly into I mean, I, when somebody says it went to a sand dune, there's no way people would believe that it actually went to a legitimate, real big sand dune. I mean, when you're sitting in the bottom of one of these dunes, you wouldn't know if you were in Moab or if you were in Glamis. I mean, 
These are big sand hills, really like nice kind of red, yellow sand, light fluffy sand. It was just such a cool spot. It's so unexpected when you're in a place that looks like it's all rock and dirt to find this legitimate blowing sand dune. And the first thing we did was what we always do, um, was just rip like crazy and go full throttle and just rip around and find all the cool spots. And um, Ray seemed like he was as happy with that as I was. So, you know, we, we did some, some traversing of the tops of the dunes and did some sweet uh, berm shots and whatever. And then eventually we managed to find what we're always looking for, and that's the jump. So we managed to find a jump that was impressive enough and, and just went back and forth and kind of hit that as hard as we could. So the trails led to the dunes, and the dunes were a lot of fun, and we had a great time there. But Ray had promised us a real, true Moab experience. That was going to be the next step, and it was going to lead us to the Overlook. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. The first part of this trip had been all about high-speed trails and riding in some sand dunes, but the next part of the trip was where we got to the real Moab experience, and that's riding on the Slick Rock. The interesting thing about riding on Slick Rock in Moab is that the name really doesn't fit the type of terrain you're riding. It's, they call it Slick Rock, but it is not slick at all. It's rock that's made of sand. Essentially, you're riding on sandpaper, and the things that you can do with that much traction are entirely unbelievable. When we first got onto the rocks, there was this little kind of crevice or something in the rocks that went really steep down one side and then immediately transitioned and went really steep out the other. And I saw it and I thought, as my first experience sort of for this trip with the Wildcat XX in the rocks, this is, I'm gonna do this and before Ray does it. So I went down into this, this little crevice and it was really steep, it was cool and he followed me and we did it three or four times because it was fun back and forth. And then of course Ray takes things just to another level and finds this notch in this crevice that I looked at and thought that's physically impossible to do. And he just roosts up the front of it like it's nothing, like no big deal. And, you know, once again, just proved that the Wildcat XX is unbelievably capable anywhere you're gonna ride it, including near vertical slick rock climbs. After our little experience there in that crevice, um, Ray promised a really cool spot that not too many people go to. He said that there was this almost cave sort of set back in the rocks. You had to drive down this narrow channel to get to it. Anyway, he said it was really cool and he wanted to take us there. And, you know, I mean, we'd been having an awesome day and he hadn't disappointed us so far. So I said, sure, let's go. The entrance to the cave was exactly as Ray had described it. I mean, it's like the water had eroded a hallway through solid rock and it wasn't very long it was maybe 100 yards long but it was pretty neat the, the side by side kind of just fit down the middle of it and when you got down the end of it there was this big circular room um, in the rock and and it was it was bizarre it was probably 30 feet high on either side kind of looked around a little bit i climbed up onto the rock somewhat and just kind of talked about how the rocks in Moab are formed and Ray gave us some history about the area and it was just really neat. And uh, it was a cool spot that you just know, you gotta be a local, you gotta know where you're riding to find that. And uh, being able to go there as an outsider was, was pretty fun. When we were done in that little cavern cave type deal, the next stop was gonna be the overlook that Ray had promised. It was gonna be our destination. And to get there, we had to climb up on top of the mountainous rocks, if you will. And the next part was true Moab rock crawling. It was climbing up out of the cavern on top of the slick rock. And it didn't matter how steep, how rutted, how sharp the rocks were. It didn't matter how vertical. The XX just clawed its way out, no problem. There was a couple spots where it was pretty vertical. It didn't seem to matter what obstacle we put in front of the XX, it just handled it. And of course, as Ray had promised, at the top of this climb was the overlook of the Green River. So we're driving down to the Green River. Uh, it is just outside of Dead Horse Point State Park. And it's, it's kind of a cool area, something different, not something that you can go see every day, uh, very many places for sure. To, to be up this high, looking down into a valley that had been completely eroded only by water. What the world is and how it's been formed, it just made, made you feel so small, but the view is amazing. 
we got to go out on some of these rocks that were right over the edge of the cliff and, and you know, just, it was neat. And, and it's not something you get to do every day. It's not something you can do just anywhere in Moab. You can get some spectacular views, but this one in particular is not something you're gonna get just anywhere. We spent a good amount of time up there having some snacks and hanging out and talking and just kind of getting a sunburn. And then it was back straight to the truck. And, and you know, we basically came back the way that we had gone through the sand and through the, the high speed trails. You know, to me, the, the Wildcat Double X is not just one of the most well or best engineered machines in the market. It means a lot more than that. It is the flagship, if you will, of a new company, of a new breed. It's the old versus the new. It's got the Textron engineering and development behind it with the Arctic Cat look, feel, and passion behind it and that's what the wildcat double x is to me this was the culmination of a really cool trip and a perfect opportunity to test the wildcat xx and really put it through its paces and develop some solid opinions of what that vehicle is and how it handles and how it rides and how it climbs this trip accomplished everything that we wanted it to and we made a new friend in the process Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. A few weeks back, we took the base 900 Razor and with the help of Kimpex, gave it a nice little facelift, adding good looking, functional accessories. This week, we're gonna continue that process with more top-notch parts that are sure to add style and more importantly, help us out on the trail. And right up front, I've never been shy to tell you that I absolutely love half doors. Don't know what it is about them, I just like the security and the way that they feel. But this razor only comes with a little quarter door. So do I have to get rid of that quarter door and buy myself an all new half door? Not at all. Kimpex offers the 2.0 door extension. And this might be one of my favorite products that they make because it's so simple, super easy to install, but most importantly, it's hugely functional. And it finishes the look of the razor off so well. They're made from heavy gauge steel and they feel really super beefy. They mount up to the factory locations and the finished rubber wide gasket fit means that you're gonna keep a good seal and not let in junk, debris, or water. Sure, they're not watertight, but you can go through a lot and they won't get you wet. You don't have to pull out the drill at all and total install time, that's eh, maybe about 30 minutes. But the change in looks is huge. Pricing is exceptionally good and should you beat these up and grind down the black finish, you can recoat it with a simple spray on bed liner to get a fresh textured finish. Now you all know that I'm gonna put a winch on this razor, right? Well, I am. I've learned over time that a winch may be the single most important accessory that you put on your ATV or side-by-side, -side, and a lot of times, people overlook them. If you get out on the trail, start having fun, and then let your confidence or peer pressure take control, you might wind up, well, scratch that, you will end up stuck. And a Kimpex 3,500 pound winch with synthetic rope like I'm installing today is the tool to get the job done and get you unstuck without having to get a hernia repaired. This kit comes with the aluminum hoss to keep your synth rope fray free and also features a wired and wireless remote so you don't have to return to the rig after you just trudge through the mud to tie it off. Cables for wiring are six gauge, it's a steel drum design and it has 49 feet of 3 16 rope. Now a simple but easy to overlook accessory for a winch is this little guy right here. Kind of looks like a rubber bumper, doesn't it? Well, it is, and you might think a winch bumper isn't needed, but you'd be surprised to know that it does more than just stop rattles when riding. It also prevents cable breakage and cable binding when your hook gets close to the fair lead or hoss. And in the case of a synthetic rope, keeps the hoss from getting carved up and fraying the rope when winching. It goes on without any tools and it'll save your bacon out on the trail. For under 25 bucks, it just makes sense. So did I save the best for last? Ah, maybe so, but truth is, I really like all of the parts that we put on this ride. However, the most visually striking are definitely gonna be the wheel and tire package. And our wheels are a beautiful set of 14 inch Raceline Mamba beadlocks in black with a black beadlock and gold bolts. They're a plus five offset, so they won't stick out too much more, but they give a great stance on the 900. The wheels complement the black color theme and the accessories that we've added and are made of a high grade heat treated aluminum. Raceline touts their rims are race proven and from the look of these beadlocks, they're ready for a beading with a true beadlock design. They come with center caps and valve stems installed and they really do give you that custom truck wheel design for your side-by-side. -side. These are some good looking rims. A wheel package wouldn't be complete without some tires, but for this setup, I wanted to go in a bit of a different direction than just your standard all-terrains. 
The Kimpex Mud Rider tire is the way that I wanted to go. It's a solid six-ply design that has a real knack for getting you where you want to go, no matter the condition, and with a healthy 1.5-inch lug, it's got the grip to pull the razor through. While it's an aggressive-looking tire, it's not overly loud or rough riding, so you get away with a lot. And you don't sacrifice much in the trail handling department. Plus, when you pull up to a big pit, you can feel confident you have the best chance possible. And hey, if you don't make it, the 3,500-pound winch is ready to get you out. Linked with the 14-inch Raceline wheels, this is a good-looking package, and the 27-inch size gives us one inch bigger than stock, which will increase ground clearance and also fills out the wheel wells much nicer than the stock 26ers. Accessories on a side-by-side -side make it, well, your side-by-side. -side. They say a lot about who you are and what you're going to do. And with these cool and functional accessories that I've added from Kimpex, I think it says that I can tackle just about anything with my Razor 900. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. It's not all that often we get caught off guard around here. I mean, even new product to the industry, we typically have a rough idea is coming down the pipeline. But this ATV has made everyone who sees it stand back and take a second look, ask a few questions, and ultimately wonder what's gotten into Yamaha. And the ATV I'm talking about is this 2019 Grizzly 700 SE. And the reason that we're taken back, well, it's not just one, it's a whole bunch. Right up front, the 700 SE makes a big statement. I mean, these 14-inch rims are absolutely not your typical Yamaha aluminum rim. These are in a whole new category and look like you just dropped a pile of cash to outdo your buddies. And then you've got the 27-inch Zilla MU01 tires that are a huge departure from your typical tame-looking all-terrain stock tire. Now, it's not just the aggressive and obvious mud direction that this tire package is headed in, but it's the size that's really surprising, and I'm not just talking about the diameter. Sure, 27-inch tires aren't your typical fare for most ATVs, and they stand out as a really healthy size, but it's the square setup that shocked me. And by square, I mean Yamaha is running the same width tire on all four wheels. This is something that many folks do aftermarket and we've always liked. But Yamaha offering this from the factory is one of the first ATVs I can remember to do this. It shows their aggressive and focused design philosophy for this Grizzly SE that might be better labeled the Swamp Grizz. Now the 2019 has another feature that may go a little bit more unnoticed due to the fact that the exterior is so darn good looking. But underneath these plastics is a new generation motor that focuses on performance and most importantly, reliability. The Yamaha 686 Next Gen engine has a focus on improved mid-range power delivery and smoother running. But when they say it's gonna be smoother, they mean it. And this new Gen 700 classer runs like a well-oiled machine and is as smooth as my wife's legs after she steals my brand new Razor. Just kidding, uh, but seriously. The 686 still does feel strong, but we notice a reduction in the felt power due to the 27 inch tires. But mid-range as advertised is still lumberjack strong. And with the aggressive mud focus of the Grizzly, we expect some reduction. I mean, 27s don't feel like 25s. And speaking of how they feel, the EPS power steering system really flexes its muscle with this tire setup and is an important feature to keep you going strong all day long. Typically, we feel the Grizzly to be a very easy steering ATV that power steering is nice, but not needed. But when you go with a square tire setup like this, especially with the big 10-inch wide 27s on the front, it's something that you're really going to appreciate when you lock up the front end and really start churning some skeg. Even though the Grizzly has a mud focus, I want to be very clear that it's still very capable out on the trail, and it's not just a one-trick Grizzly. Ground clearance is a whopping 11.8 inches, and with 7.6 inches of travel up front and 9.1 inches out back, you're getting some significant travel numbers that truly wreck the competition by almost two inches. I mean, Yamaha is closer to playing with its North American competition in suspension than it is with the rest of the Japanese-built ATVs. But when I speak to competition, I'm referring to the Honda Rincon 680, the Suzuki King Quad 750, and yes, even the Kawasaki Brute Force 750 as well. While the Grizzly 700 doesn't compete head-to-head -head in the V-Twin category, I would say that it rivals the Brute Force in every single way, except for engine performance, quite handily. Sure, we all want Yamaha to bring us a V-Twin in the Grizzly, and I think it's a longing they know is there. But evaluating the Grizzly for what it is and not what we think it could be is what we're here to do. And for me, the 2019 Grizzly SE is far and away the best Grizz I've ever ridden, laid eyes on, and had the pleasure of putting my boots to. It's responsive, fun, well-suspended, and ultimately focused on a buyer that I've never seen Yamaha cater to. 
and it's a move I believe will really gain the momentum, not just in the mud, but with buyers who are searching for that legendary Yamaha reliability, but want a purpose-built mud-ready ride right from their dealer. While I've focused a lot on the new direction of the Grizzly SE, the truth is there's a whole lot of parts and pieces that go into this Grizzly to make it so much more than just a mud-ready ATV. And it's attention to detail with features like the backcountry blue metallic plastic paint that's the best looking color I've seen on an ATV, the LED headlights and taillights that keep you going after the sun gives up, and the center pod mounted halogen light and new for 2019 larger LCD gauge package that's easier to read while in motion and gives us all the info we could ever ask for. Add to this a real world tough USA assembly, 1300 pound towing capacity with standard two inch hitch receiver and large diameter steel cargo racks that'll haul up to 308 pounds and you've got the most capable Grizzly that's ever been produced that's focused on the hottest segment in the industry. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Textron Off-Road, power, performance, and precision engineering. Thanks for watching this Dirt Tracks segment. Make sure you hit the subscribe button where you can watch pretty much anything related to ATV and side-by-sides.